So here's the flawed concept, guys. Um, some of you have probably heard me talk about this before, but the conventional wisdom or the common conception about creating success in the local industry, local SEO industry is flawed. And I guess you could probably say that for the SEO industry, um, the wider SEO industry as well, but we're talking specifically on local. So we're taught that all we need to do to be successful is learn how to rank stuff for local businesses. Uh, but as such, most people spend months or even years, even th thousands of dollars, um, months or even years and thousands or even tens of thousands of dollars just learning SEO tactics before ever making the first time. Um, I don't know how many of you can relate to that, but I know I've, I've, I have an onboarding call with mastermind members that join us all the time. Uh, I always have a 30 minute call with, with new mastermind members. And, and we hear a lot about people that come in that have been, that have spent a ton of money and spent a ton of time on ed, ed, SEO education and they're not making much money. Like they've invested a lot more than they've recovered. So it's not really producing a return yet. Uh, I've heard that a lot. That's again, why I wanted to do this presentation specifically is because I, I hear so much about people in our industry that at least come join the mastermind um, that are struggling to make money, right? And so, uh, and but they've spent so much time learning and testing and trying things and all of that. And so, uh, you know, Furthermore, learning to rank stuff does not automatically mean it will be easy to land clients, right? You still need to learn marketing, sales, billing, management, support, et cetera. This requires more time, more effort, and more money. So, you know, just learning how to rank stuff alone is, it's a great skill to have, certainly. But that doesn't mean you're going to be able to monetize it and make, you know, considerable fuck you money from it, right? And that's kind of what we're here to do. Uh, we all said that we were here because we want to make money, maybe as well as have a passion for SEO, but we all are here to make money, right? So, why did you get into local SEO? If you wanted to spend countless hours and truckloads of money to learn something before monetizing it, why not just go to college, right? Why not go sign up for $15,000 per semester college and do that for the next four years? Uh, because then you're going to walk away with, you know, $80,000 in debt and have, uh, and before you ever make your first time. And that's essentially what I hear a lot of people in the SEO industry doing, spend countless hours and thousands or tens of thousands of dollars on education. And you're not really making any money um, or very little money. So question four, guys, what do you invest more time and effort into building? Your client's business, your business, or an equal amount on both? Be honest, please. Sadly, one, I don't say, I wouldn't say that, Carol, but thank you for your honesty. Will said, and Will, I would, would have expected that from you for sure. Um, one, <laughs> I appreciate you all being honest again, for real. Um by the way, I did that for many years. One, one was mine for many years, from until about three years ago, and that's again what changed everything was deciding to work on my business. Um, and, and it wasn't really three years ago; it was a, it was about, it, it was it was. I'll get to the story, but it was more it was more about two years ago. Three years ago is when I launched the directory site, and that started to change things. But it wasn't until about two years ago that I really decided, like, hey, I need to focus more on my business than my client's business because my clients are going to benefit. When they, when they stop paying me, they're still going to benefit from what I did, but I'm left holding nothing, nothing to show for it other than the revenue that I earned while working on their assets. Why, why do I keep doing this? Right? I've been working on SEO for, like I said, when I finally made this decision and realized it, it was, you know, 12 years, 10 years, 10, 11 years in the SEO industry. And um, God, I built a lot of other people's businesses, but didn't build much of one up for myself. Right. And I know some of you can relate. All right. So uh, local SEOs often find themselves immersed in the task of building their clients' businesses, dedicating more time and effort to them than they do to their own. Common reasons for this are immediate revenue generation. This makes absolute sense, guys. So again, it's normal. It's 100% normal in this industry, which is why I think this is flawed. Clients pay marketers for their services, generating immediate revenue for the marketing agency or professional. This income is essential for sustaining the business, covering operational costs and compensating staff. As such, local marketers prioritize their client work as it directly contributes to their financial stability. Okay, that makes total sense, right? It costs money to operate a business. So you need to generate revenue. So we focus on generating revenue by working on our clients' businesses. And I get that. We have to. We've got to fulfill and we have to generate revenue. And it's hard when we're spending all of our time working on our clients' businesses to find the time to work on ours, because it's not usually when we're working on our business, it generally doesn't produce a, an immediate return, right? And so that's why we often put it off, right? We, we, we tell ourselves, oh, well, I, I will, I'll, I'll set up that marketing campaign, I'll set up that ad campaign, I'll, I'll, I'll do some cold emailing 
to try to generate some new business or I'll build a site that I'll try to rank for, you know, marketing keywords, et cetera. I'll, but I'll do that later once I take care of this next client, right? And then the next client comes in and it's, I'll push it off later. And I know I did it for years myself. Resource constraints. Many local SEO agencies are small businesses themselves with limited resources, including time, personnel, and budget. These constraints make it challenging to allocate sufficient resources to their own marketing efforts. In such cases, focusing on client works takes precedence to meeting to meet immediate needs. Well, what if you could do both at the same time? Prioritize, prioritize building your business while simultaneously building theirs. All right. So just let that let that one kind of uh, sink in for a middle uh, steep for a bit, as they would say. Mm -hmm. Right. Cash flow is king. What is cash flow? Well, according to the Harvard Business School. Cash flow refers to the net balance of cash moving into and out of a business at a specific point in time. Cash flow can be positive or negative. Positive cash flow means a company has more money moving into it than out of it. Negative cash flow, um, conversely, indicates a company has more money moving out of it than into it, right? So conventional wisdom in our industry is to learn SEO first, but learning SEO takes time and money. Operating a business takes time and money. The apps, tools, and services needed to run a business requires money. And hiring staff requires money. This typically produces negative cash flow for new SEO agencies with few clients. So neg remember, negative cash flow indicates a company has more money moving out of it than into it. How many of you can relate to that, right? Where you're, you know, you're spending more than you're making. Um, and I mean, it, it happens. Um, so let's fix it. A better approach. There's an article by uh, an interview that was done that Inc. published uh, with Mark Cuban. It's fantastic. Uh, these And I, I pulled the three points out, but these three points are gold, in my opinion. So that's why I pulled them out. But the link's there if you guys want to check out the article later. Sales cures all. It's funny because my former partner, um, uh, one of my former partners, um, Hernan Vasquez, he he used to say sales cures all. And I, I, I wasn't sure where he got that statement. So I've always attributed it to him. I've always said that's at least where I heard it first. But then I went and just did a Google search when I was preparing this presentation for sales cures all. And it came up. The first thing that came up was this Inc. article from Mark Cuban. So, um, so I'm assuming that he was the one that said it originally, but I'm still going to give credit to Hernan because Hernan is the one that I heard it from. So but <clears throat> Hernan said that a lot and it never, it didn't really sink in to me for, for until I, till I, till I started to experience it myself. Then it really, then I was like, fuck, now I know what he's talking about. You know what I mean? And uh, so sales cures all this one is simple. Cuban said, Mark Cuban said, there has never been a business that succeeded without sales. I repeat, there has never been a business that succeeded without sales. All right. So entrepreneurs often think they need a business plan or the infrastructure to support a growing company, but really they don't. They need sales. So get out there and sell, right? That's the thing, right? I just got to have this CRM set up. I just got to have this uh, a, you know, new website builder set up. I just have to have this new SEO tactic that I learned. I just got to make sure I'm comfortable doing that. I just got to do that. I just have to do this. I just have to do that. It's always making excuses to avoid selling. Because selling is uncomfortable. It can be, but it doesn't have to be, right? Um, through repetition, you can get better at it to where it becomes, once again, there's another quote you'll see in a minute. It says, once difficult, now easy, right? Um, so you don't make money in local SEO from knowing how to rank stuff. You make money from selling SEO services. So start learning how to sell stuff first. Duh, right? Like it's that simple. And I can't believe it took me so many years to finally realize that. Um, I'm, I'm not kidding guys, 10 years into the fucking industry is finally when I decided, okay, I need to learn, I need to learn how to sell SEO and focus on sales. And it changed everything in my business. I can't stress that enough. Um, and I do a hundred percent of the sales for all of our companies, all of our businesses, me. Why? Because nobody cares about the revenue of your company as much as you do. Nobody. So your job as the owner, the leader, the CEO, whatever, should be to go out there and generate revenue, right? You have to lead your company. You have to manage, if you don't have managers, you have to manage your team and all of that. You still have to wear a lot of hats, but your primary hat should be marketing and sales, at least initially, until you get your cash flow needs met. Then you can start doing all the other stuff in the business, right? Get your cash flow needs met first. I think that's on the next slide. Take care of your cash flow needs first. I learned that statement from Ron Legrand when I studied house flipping uh, from 2001 to 2000, and, well, excuse me, 2003 to 2007. 
I flipped houses. Um, I, I worked for the phone company, uh, Verizon. Um, and then I learned, I'd Ron Legrand sent me some direct mail when I was working at the phone company and I'd had a great job at the phone company. I was making 70 grand a year at 21 years old, uh, full benefits, you know, retirement plan, all that stuff. And I got a fucking direct mail from Ron Legrand about quick turn real estate, how to make money flipping houses in 2003. And I read that sales letter probably a dozen times over six months. I swear to God, I kept putting it off, putting it aside and read it again later and read it again. Finally, I bought the damn course. I don't remember what it was, like three grand or whatever it was. Home study course on how to flip real estate, uh, flip houses, do wholesaling, um, rehabbing, all kinds of stuff. Subject to deals, which are creative financing, all this kind of stuff. And I started, I got bought the damn course and I studied it for like three months. I was, I had been going to college uh, at night on the phone company's dime um, to study electrical engineering. And I, I was married at the time. And uh, I told my wife at the time, I said, look, I want to quit going to school and I want to study instead this real estate business. And, um, and, and, you know, she tentatively, you know, kind of uh, hesitantly agreed to allow me to, to say, okay, give me her blessing or whatever. But I'll never forget that during the training, Ron Legrand said, uh, you know, take care of your cash flow needs first, because he said a lot of people get into the real estate business to, uh, you know, because they want to make money. And, getting into the house flipping business a lot of people because like wholesaling houses is easy to do it's it's just moving paperwork right it's just you you just shuffle paperwork around and you can make thousands of dollars you know five eight ten twelve grand on a house flip so it's a wholesale deal where you find a house get it under contract and then you just basically mark up the contract and sell your contract you sell your position as buyer in the contract for a fee an assignment fee or whatever anyway he recommended i'm getting to a point here he recommended that anybody getting into the S or excuse me, the SEO business, the real estate business for quick term real estate should focus 100% on wholesaling only until their cash flow needs are met. And I'll never forget that statement. Take care of your cash flow needs first. It 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 struck me. And so I listened to it, but I was I was young. I was 21 when I started doing this. Uh uh uh, I might have, I think I was 23. Anyway, when I started doing house flipping, I, I was young. So I thought I knew better than Ron Legrand. Um, so I started with wholesaling. I started flipping houses and just doing wholesaling. But because of my construction background as an electrician, I very quickly shifted away from like, why am I flipping a house that up for eight grand or five grand or whatever, when I can buy it and, and rehab it and make 50 grand, 60 grand. And so I got into the rehabbing business and started rehabbing houses. And, um, in 2007, when the real estate bubble burst in the United States, I fucking lost my ass and I went bankrupt and my wife took off because she got used to a level of money that I couldn't provide when I went bankrupt. And it just like everything crashed because I really didn't stick to this. Take care of your cash flow needs first, right? I wanted, I got greedy. And so I got to the point with the rehab business where I was, you know, there were months, stretches of months where I had thousands of dollars going out to pay contractors and things like that and nothing coming in with the hopes that that sale would occur once the rehab was done and I'd make a big flood of cash. But the point that I'm trying to make is I had negative cash flow for a long time, my real estate business. And it ended up when, when everything fell apart, like I had nothing to show for it and I had that business went bankrupt. So it really struck me is to take care of your cash flow needs first. And so when I kind of realized this uh, with my SEO agency, um, it, it kind of hit me. I was like, okay, well, I remembered that statement. Take care of your cash flow needs first. And I think that's really important, guys, to internalize that. Learn marketing and sales first. Then sell, baby, sell, right? Learn marketing and sales. Trust me, guys. The thing is, this creates positive cash flow to support all business activities. Education, personnel requirements, uh, personnel requirements, excuse me, apps, tools, services, et cetera. In other words, remember, if you've got a lot of money coming in your agency, it opens up a lot of doors and opportunities to just get shit done. Right. You can hire more people. You can hire you can buy more education if you need it. You can buy education and then hire people to put them through the education so that you can focus on marketing and sales, but you can improve your operations. Right. Um, you can buy tools, apps, services, white label services, you know, use third party fulfillment providers. Who cares? Get as much damn revenue coming in as possible. And then now you've got money to throw at problems. It solves a lot of damn problems. It really does. Um, so a better approach. Uh, excuse me, this is point number two from Mark Cuban. He says, don't ask for help. I like this. I like how, you know, kind of blunt he is. Dude, get off your fucking ass and get to work, he says. Figure the shit out. Part of what's going on in school is everyone is saying, will you help me? Help yourself. And I get that. How do you get better at doing anything? You do more of it. 
right? So no amount of study or preparing to sell is going to help you build a pro profitable SEO business as quickly as just doing it, right? Um, the quickest way to learn how to sell successfully is to book more sales calls, not reading more books, not taking more sales courses, not watching more YouTube videos about sales. The best way to get good at sales is book more damn sales calls, full stop, right? Brian's here, Brian Caddo's here, and uh, Brian can attest to this, and Chris G as well. Um, I started a sales mastermind. This part of this process that I'm talking about today, I went through a about a year and a half of meeting every Thursday with Brian and Chris G and uh, <clears throat> Dietrich and uh, a couple of others from our mastermind. I had a, I created a little mini mastermind called that we called the Sales Mastermind, and we met every Thursday for an hour for a, at least a year and a half, maybe a little bit more. And we, with the sole intent, the sole purpose was to study and talk about sales. And that's how I got good at sales because I made a commitment to study and practice sales, not just study, but study and practice sales. And um, I really haven't had a chance to talk with Chris and Chris G and uh, Brian about it since we closed that down. But it was ab that year and a half that I studied sales and we would meet weekly and discuss we 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 talk we would read books like we would read we would take one of them that I'm going to recommend at the end of this uh, presentation today is called um the mindset of a sales warrior we i think there was like 44 chapters in that book and um so uh, i mean we we went through like almost an entire year on just that one book where we would read a chapter every week and then we would go through the exercises at the end of the chapter and then we would talk about it during our meeting, our sales mastermind meeting, and then we would discuss, you know, how how we applied that week's lesson to our to our uh, our sales calls that week and things like that. And it was absolutely transformative for my business. It changed everything. Was to spend that time learning and discussing sales and then applying what I learned. I, it, it, Brian and uh, Chris know, like when we started that sales marketing mastermind. Um, I was I, I was awful at sales. I hated it. I tried to avoid it at all costs. I knew it wasn't going to be fun. Like I did, I wasn't going to enjoy learning sales and everything else, but I knew it was necessary. So that's why we did it. And like, I'm, there's no substitute guys for just doing it, right? All the study in the world is not going to prepare you to be good at sales as good as just doing it. So I'm not saying don't study. You absolutely should. You should read books. You should, but, but you should not, but you should be out there applying what you learn in your sales tactics, right? So if you're going to read stuff and study stuff or watch videos online to talk about, you know, how to close and things like that, which I think if you, if you have a really good offer, sales becomes a lot easier anyway. We'll talk about that in a minute, but um, all I'm saying is you can do all of that. And I recommend that you do because that's how you get better quick. But the only way you're going to get better is to just book more damn sales calls, get over your fear and sell, sell, sell. And that's what I did. And I'm not here to brag or anything else. I'm just saying, because I hated it. I tried to avoid it for 10 fucking years in my career, guys. I tried to avoid sales calls at all costs. I tried to close people over email, video email, anything, but to try to avoid sales calls. And I don't know why I was so scared of sales for so long. I really don't. Um, because now I'm pretty fucking good at it, you know? And I won't hesitate for a second to jump on a sales call. Like, I don't think twice about it, right? I just jump on a sales call because that's where the money comes from, baby. And I want that money. You know what I'm saying? So, and I'm not here again, guys, just telling you, you can develop the skill of sales, but the only way to do it is to book more sales calls, right? So you need to get your lead flow up. You need to be marketing for your own agency, get leads coming in and get on sales calls and understand you're going to screw a lot of them up up front. Fine. You're going to dial it in. You'll start, you'll at some point, especially if you're in a particular industry, you will get to know that industry so well, you will anticipate their questions before they even ask them. So you can set, you know, uh, uh, stop objections before they occur, all kinds of stuff. And your closing rate will go through the roof when you start to understand your industry as well. It's not just about learning sales tactics. You also have to understand who you're selling to, what, what is important to them, what are their pain points, what compels them to take action. There's a number of ways you can do that, which again, I'll talk about uh, the resources at the end, but spin selling, the spin selling method, method uh, situation, problem, implication, need, payoff. It's an acronym, SPIN, by Neil Rackham. Uh, it's fantastic. That is the model that the, the sales approach that I have used. Um, since I've really kind of started all this, I've studied sales with, again, those, uh, some former, or excuse me, some mastermind members. And there's a, a several resources that I'm going to share that have also been very, very benef um, 
very helpful in my ability, my 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 kind of journey on becoming better at sales. Uh, so I'm going to share with you guys all those resources. But the spin selling method precisely is the one that I still use to this day when I'm doing what I call a discovery call. I always do two two call closes for sales, uh, except for semantic links. Well, even then, I don't really ask for the close at the end of that. So it's a one call sales call for semantic links. But for my agency clients. Uh, for local SEO stuff, I would do two call closes. The first one's always called a discovery call. And that's where I just go through the spin selling method. Just ask questions, situation, problem, implication, need payoff. There's a, a sequence of questions that you ask and that you basically just shut up and listen and let people, let your, let your prospect talk. And they talk themselves into buying your service through the questions that you ask them. You just let them talk themselves into it. S spin selling is phenomenal, guys. I would encourage you to check it out. But anyways, um, Psycho Cybernetics, Dr. Maxwell Maltz, another transformative book that's a, a mindset thing, not a sales thing. But he says in his book, uh, Once Difficult, Now Easy. And I think that, that I've internalized that. I've read Psycho Cybernetics. Um, I try to uh, read or listen to the audio book at least once a year for the last five or six years. Um, it's it's phenomenal, guys. If you have any kind of self-doubt or anything like that, uh, Psycho Cybernetics is phenomenal. But that St stood out to me. And I say that to myself all the time, swear to God, in my own, in my own head. Like if I don't want to do something or it's difficult, there's a learning curve. I once difficult, now easy, meaning it's going to be hard until you just put in the reps, put in the work and it will become easier. Right. And that's it. So by the way, Alex Ramosi, I wish I would have thought about this when I was creating this presentation, but Alex Ramosi did a uh, interview with Lewis Howes. It's on YouTube. It's on Lewis Howes YouTube channel. Um, but it, it was a real long interview, but there was a section in there where, uh, Alex Ramosi is talking about how, I guess there's been some studies done or whatever. And it says like the, the highest amount of learning, um, that you're going to like the quickest amount that you're going to learn uh, something or the, the most that you're going to learn is within the first 20 hours of doing something. Right. And then after that, you've achieved kind of a, a very good understanding of, of whatever it is that you're, um, you know, the new task or whatever that you're trying to learn. And so then your uh, the rate at which you learn past 20 hours declines a lot. Like, so you might still learn more, but it's a much slower kind of learning curve. Whereas uh, initially it's, it's like, you know, what do they call that? A, uh, I can't remember. I haven't been in calculus in 20 years, but uh, anyways, you know what I'm talking about? So the first 20, so basically the, the, long story short, the, the essence of what he was saying was, if you know that, then just commit to 20 hours for anything new that you know is going to be difficult. So let's, let's apply that to sales. Right. I'm just period. Just put 20 fucking hours into doing sales calls, like scheduling sales calls and say, like, during these 20 hours, I'm going to learn more about how to sell to my chosen industry, to my specific business uh, owner type um, than I will any other time. So just put it in. Just understand 20 hours is your learning curve and commit to putting those 20 hours in. That's it. That's I mean, it makes it so much easier. Another great book. And I didn't put that in the slides either. is called um, by Richard Fenton called Go for No. Go for knows uh, he, it's a very short book, quick read. You can read it in you know an hour or whatever, probably. Very short book. It's called Go for No. Um, and he talks about, you know, with sales, every time you get a no, you know that you're that much, you're 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 one step closer to your next yes. So if you look at it that way, just under, just make fucking book sales calls. Understand that people you're gonna screw some up, people are gonna deny you. It's okay, because now you're one step closer to your to it, your next yes, your next close. So anyway, better approach. Number three, be prepared. Being prepared is the best way to reduce risk, Cuban said. Everyone thinks entrepreneurship is risky, but he doesn't take risks himself. When you walk into a room, if you don't know more about your industry, your customer, your business than everyone, anyone else in the world, someone like me is going to come in and kick your ass. Read that again, guys. Like, seriously. So what he's saying is, yeah, guys, you should know your industry, not the SEO industry. I'm not talking about that unless you're selling the SEOs like I do for white label services. That's fine. You should know the fucking industry then, which I know this industry well, right? But you should know whatever chosen industry you are in for your agency better than they do. Because then you can sell, 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 I promise. When you understand their industry better than they do, uh, or if you don't, someone else that knows their industry is going to come kick your ass, right? And that's exactly what I'm saying here, guys. Get to know and... and Again, I say this all the time, and some of you have agencies that are me too agencies, generalist agencies, work with all different kinds of industries. That's fine. If you have a good operation that works for you, that's fine. But I know from being a coach and semantic mastery and doing all these onboarding calls, most 
most of the people that join our, our group that are me too generalists that will work with any business that will look at them, right? That will look in their direction. So I'll, I'll do it. Yeah, I can do it for you. I can do it for you. They're struggling. Every one of them are struggling. Very, very rarely do we have people that come in that serve multiple industry types that have thriving agencies. They might be doing okay, but very few of them have thriving agencies because there's an enormous amount of work. And by the way, again, being a, you can be a good SEO technician. I know some some people think that, and I, and it's fine. I have a differing opinion. I, SEO is SEO, but if you if you you have to know marketing, you have to understand the industries that you work within at such a deep level now to be effective, in my opinion, that it's almost impossible to maintain that for multiple industries. It, I mean, I don't know how anybody does it. I really don't. Um, I don't know how anybody can to, can get to know at such a deep level multiple industries. Uh, because it just takes so much time and trial and error to really discover all this stuff. I just don't know how anybody does it. So the point that I'm trying to say here, guys, if you've taken even one SEO course or even read one SEO book, you already know more about SEO than 95% of all local business owners. So you might not know SEO, but do you know their industry? Do you know their customers? Do you know their business? That's why you're not selling as well as you could be, or as much as you could be, because you don't understand the industries you're selling to as deeply as you should, right? If you know their industry as well as they do or better, then all of a sudden now you're like a mentor to them, right? You can be considered uh, a mentor and people will start to seek out your advice in that industry. Um, it just changes everything. It really does. So I really, really like that statement. When you walk into a room, if you don't know more about your industry, your customers, your business than anyone else in the world, someone like me is going to come in and kick your ass. Amen, brother. Amen. Right. So a better approach is to identify an industry. And by the way, guys, that link right there, you don't have to click it now, but that's going to take you to the circle community, our circle community. As far as I know, that will allow you to uh, get access. You have to register if you're not already in circle uh, in our community, but you have to register. Uh, but I think that that link will allow you to register to access that training about how to select an industry, picking a niche or an industry. Um, it's very thorough training. And so any of you that haven't already selected a niche or you're, you're trying to weigh different niches, like you're, you're considering different uh, industries to potentially work with, go get registered for that. It's free. Um, or, and if you have any problems, contact support at semanticmastery.com and Chris G will get you sorted. Uh, but again, that's a very thorough training that I did on how to identify an industry that has that you know spends money you validate that's a um that's a viable industry there's it's a very thorough training so i would encourage you guys to go through that i'm going to give you guys several resources throughout today learn everything you can about that industry learn their business vocabulary learn the consumer vocabulary because it's two sets of vocabulary right you have to learn how to speak to the business owner you also have to speak you have, you have to learn what is compelling at the consumer level what what are they what, what are their needs what are their what are they trying to solve so that you can be effective at marketing for the business? But you also have to understand the business, right? And understand the language of the business and understand how to talk and communicate with the owners of those businesses. So you have to understand language and vocabulary at two levels. Um, and again, with Google's natural language model now, guys, Google understands language better than we do. It does. So become a student of language. I mean that. It's going to make you a more effective SEO. And, and so if you're trying to understand language uh, uh, across multiple industries, it becomes very difficult. Select one and study, right? Go deep. Don't go wide, go deep. As deep as you can into that industry and get to know it and get to know the, in, the vocabulary. Because then you'll figure out what converts at selling to the business owners. And you'll figure out what converts at selling to the consumers of that industry so that you can make your job more effective for the, your clients, et cetera. You understand the pain points. What problems does the business have that you can solve? What problems do the consumers have that the business can solve? You need to know this, right? Uh, what is compelling at both levels? Copy, creatives, offers, et cetera. And then develop a SIN offer. We'll talk about that on the next slide and a marketing plan based around what you've discovered and learned through your deep dive, extensive study and research into that particular industry. You develop a SIN offer that speaks directly to the business owner, okay? Craft your pitch and practice and refine through repetition. Again, there is no substitute for that, guys. All the study in the world is not gonna prepare you for sales calls. Sales calls prepares you for sales calls.